Um, thank you. And I, I think this gets to the fact that, and, and some of the questioning, and thank you so much, uh, Representative Coriard, for coming in. Uh, and Representative Coriard, nobody would ever paint you as the most liberal of Democrats, right? <laughs> you are somebody who really believes I think, in... Uh, I think $20 million <laughs> spent against me would probably yeah. say that. Right, and, and yet you are, you are here noting that this bill needs a lot of work because it does not reflect the values that we must hold, which is focusing on our servicemen. Is, is that correct? Will, will you be able to vote for this bill in its present form? No, under this one, absolutely no. Uh, look, this is something that has changed completely. It's, it's, I always look at the, uh, the base mark of what we did last year, and it's not where we were last year, what was the bipartisan bill. So this is only a snapshot uh, to get the bill passed through the House majority. Once we sit down with the Senate and negotiate the work product that comes back, it's going to be very different. It'd be something that probably I'll be able to support. Right, but but what we're what we're talking about there then is that in essence there had been an agreement to work out uh, appropriation bills so that they would reflect flat funding from uh, last year. And we now are facing uh, bills that do not reflect flat funding, but instead actually have cuts. And these are cuts that are not theoretical. They're not cuts that don't have any impact. They are real cuts that change conditions on the ground. Uh, my state is one of the states that has contamination from PFAS. Uh, it has contamination from PFAS that's actually threatening the Ogallala uh, uh, aquifer which serves many, many states. So imagine when PFAS gets into the groundwater uh, to states who are relying on that. Uh, in my state, it's ruined a dairy farm. It's threatened many other dairy farms. It's threatening uh, an Air Force base. Uh, would you agree that actually funding PFAS is one of those priorities that is important, not just for the military, but for the surrounding communities? It's not only important to the military, but all the surrounding communities uh, around it, it's important to their uh, health. Look, there was an agreement that was made, uh, Speaker uh, McCarthy and, and, and the President, and they reached an agreement. Uh, but somewhere down the line, it was said that, oh, that was only the top line. and We can go below. It's like me going, I'll use Matt Cartwright's example. It's like we, uh, I'm going to sell you a house for $500,000. I'll go to the closing, and at the closing, I give you 250000 and said, well, hold it. I thought we agreed to uh, 500,000, uh, yeah, that was only the top. We're going to go ahead and work it out. And I understand the arguments about uh, debt, but look, in my personal opinion, debt falls to both Democrats at about 9.2, 9.3 uh, trillion dollars. Uh, then you have President um, uh, Trump in four years added 7.8 trillion dollars in four years, almost matching what the president, uh, the prior president did. So in my opinion, it falls to both. And nobody said anything when that debt was being spent on the prior administration. And all of a sudden, a new president comes in, and then debt becomes an issue. I saw that in 2010 and 11, and I see it. I, I think it falls on both sides. My right. Point. And, and, and but they don't point out that actually in the first two years of the Biden administration and using policies that were passed out of Congress and the House and the Senate, we actually brought uh, the debt down. So if we think about who has been best about a, a addressing debt and deficit, it actually turns out to be Democrat administrations. But I want to talk a little bit about this uh, concept of woke, uh, that there seems to be quite some quite fear of sort of wokeness, and nobody really can actually even define it. But what, how is PFAS contamination and cleaning up PFAS in any way related to woke? It is, yes or no, is it related? If you're asking me, yes. no, it's not related. Uh, uh, Chairman, no. Judge, is there any relationship between wokeness and, and PFAS no. contamination? Is there any relationship? The difference is that right, it's, it's one chemical. Yeah. It's, it's one chemical, which you have to have cleaned up. And the Defense Department doesn't want to do a one chemical cleanup. Yeah. They want multiple chemical cleanups. Right. And that's the difference. Right. So that's, that's about the need to have cleanup uh, so that we are actually... When we, know, you know, I'm not saying that there was an intent to contaminate, but in places like New Mexico, uh, the military has contaminated, and I think it's only uh, fair and right uh, and reflects the, the appropriate values to say we made a mistake, <laughs> we will clean up that mistake. Uh, and I would say about the same thing, the, the cuts to military construction, those have nothing to do with some worry about wokeness, right? I mean, the cuts 
to construction are simply cuts to construction. And those impact not just military readiness, but uh, Representative Cuellar, that's an impact on the local economy, correct? Because we're not no longer building what is needed yeah, on those sites. It, it, it has a good question. It has an impact, uh, uh, Congresswoman, uh, not only on the service uh, men and women, but also their families. But also it adds, we know, military spending like San Antonio. Uh, military spending is so important. I was just at Randolph Air Force Base talking about construction just yesterday. And so it has an impact on the local uh, economy. And look, we know there's a backlog. No ifs, no buts. And it's either you pay now or you're going to be paying much, much at a later time. So I'd rather pay now. Right. And, and Judge, would you agree that when uh, I know in anybody's home, if you, if, you, if you don't do the repairs right away, it ends up costing more later? Uh, is, is that kind of been your experience? And with anybody you, in the building business, you're right. if you don't finish the project, it gets more expensive. It does get more expensive. I so by with that. Right. Thanks. However, we, we have given a more our mil military construction budget is much more than the VA budget. It's lower, but it's much, it's much more targeted fighting the war than as usual. But, but we, that we go back to the point that was made earlier by my colleague that it is indeed a cut, and it's a cut from what, uh, in a sense, we thought there would be agreement on because of both what came out of with the, the debt deal and which passed out of this house on a bipartisan basis uh, and what's needed. The last point I want to talk about is just veterans. Um, and it's my understanding that initially uh, the bill with regards to funding for veterans was lower and that there was an outcry about that and, and funding uh, now is what it is. Is, is that correct, uh, Representative Cuellar? That's correct. Uh, so, but... But, you know, when I think of service, we tell our veterans over and over again, thank you for your service. And in my mind, those words ring hollow if we are not providing veterans with the services that we have promised, but not just promised, they earned those services. And so some of those services are through the VA, but so many other of those services are through HUD, uh, through some of the programs, the ag, the ag bill, which we'll be taking up later, you know, the nutrition programs, those services that veterans have been promised come through many different agencies. Is, is that correct, Representative Cuellar? Absolutely. W would you agree with that as well, uh, Judge? I would. Yeah. And so I think when we look at these bills, we're going to need to look at them and say, are we continuing to honor our <laughs> veterans by providing them the services in each of the areas that we fund? Uh, as we look at those. And uh, with that, Mr. Chair, I yield back. Thank you very much.